Hi everybody, thank you for joining us today for another one of our videos all about equestrian confidence. Okay, so welcome to You Got This Equestrian and today we have Ginger and Tonic Equestrian from Instagram joining us. I am so excited to have Laura here. If you haven't checked out Laura's account, you need to go and have a look. She does some of the most amazing reels and loads of them feature her clothing, which is even better. But she has the most phenomenal account and she's so open and honest about not only her journey but also just like life with horses in general and shows all the stuff that we all can relate to because it's not all perfect and our horses aren't always angels as much as we would like them to be mm -hmm. so Laura do a little intro of yourself tell everybody about you no pressure so uh, yeah those reels I am forever getting caught by other people on the yard who don't use social media so they're like what on earth are you doing? <laughs> I never get caught by the people that like use TikTok and Instagram. It's always the people that are like, you're right. <laughs> um, yes, I am a 29 year old, uh, very nervous, getting slightly less nervous um, equestrian. I'm based up in the northeast of Scotland. Um, I have had my lovely lone horse tonic on loan for the past, it'll be four years this month actually. Um, so it started off as is my friend's horse. She has two um, and she just didn't have time to do um, the two of them, you know, what like. And um, she asked me if I wanted just to kind of pot it about with tonic um, so he wasn't just getting fat in the field for, you know, like I would do maybe a day or two a week. Um, and it's just kind of snowballed from there. Um, and he is absolutely lovely. I love the bones of him. Um, but he's not necessarily a natural confidence giver, <laughs> um, bless him. He's quite a warrior. So we're 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 similar in that respect. Um, and I think on paper that can sound like not a very good match. Like the horse is a warrior, the human's a warrior. Um, but I actually think because we're so similar, like we get each other in a way that like you know other people might not kind of thing um and we have gone from like literally couldn't ride him in the arena without another horse um or he'd lose his mind to like going out on solo hacks and um we're kind of looking at venturing away from the safety net of the yard this year as well to get some lessons um externally and stuff so yeah um I set my Instagram account up just because I was like all my non-horsey friends are probably so bored of me just like constantly spamming <laughs> pictures of tonic on my um, like personal Instagram account um and then I posted it Riders Minds had posted something about the concept of burnout and I'd actually not long been on a training course for work um I'm a community worker so it was about kind of supporting people but also knowing your own limits um in terms of looking after yourself and we did a really useful exercise it was like think of 10 like I think it was up to 10 things that you do when you realize you're like on the cusp of having a bit of a burnout episode um and like I find that a really useful exercise because I was like oh yeah these are all signs that I'm about to go <laughs> um and I did after seeing the kind of the conversations on the rider's mind post I posted a bit and I mentioned this training exercise and I got so like honestly my phone was going mental I got so many messages from people being like no one talks about this um and actually that was really helpful um because you know no one talks about it but also no one talks about how to deal with it and I kind of thought I was like between my own experience of being really quite nervous quite a lot of the time having kind of tackled quite a lot of those confidence demons I'm still there's still some stuff that the demons are very well and truly there um and also you know having my own stuff with anxiety and also my professional experience I was like I think I can do something with this um and yeah then it just kind of snowballed from there and now I'm yeah the lip-syncing mental health person <laughs> I think I've missed my calling in life as a as a, a lip-sync artist <laughs> Fab your videos though they're really good do they take you ages to do no no I just have to learn the lip sync and then just go I think I'd be great on drag race for like lip sync for your life <laughs> that might be my next venture <laughs> so no, 
when I first started doing it, I thought it would take me ages. Um, and then once you kind of get into the swing of them, you're like, oh, actually, that's not, it doesn't take long at all. Oh, that's good, because they do look like they would be really time consuming, because you put quite a few out. Oh, no, oh, like it's the captions probably take more time than actually filming and editing their deals, which is uh, a bit bananas. So when did you first start riding? So I have, I would have had like little pony treks and stuff when I was really wee. Um, and then I think I was maybe about like nine or ten when I managed to persuade my mum and dad that ballet and tap dancing was not for me. I was really rubbish at it. Um, and please could I go horse riding instead? <laughs> um, so I had like kind of, it wasn't pony club. It was like a wee Saturday morning club thing that you went to and you would do your little like half hour riding lesson and then you'd learn all about the horses and stuff. And then I had a break. Uh, when I was about 16 I got a part-time job which meant I wasn't able to uh, do as much horsey stuff and then my friend bless her took me out on a hack um at the place that she rode um and I had quite a bad fall and it did it messed with me quite a lot like confidence wise I was never I've never been a lot of people talk about how like oh when I was a kid I would do chase me Charlie and I'd gallop and I'd do all this and I was like even as a kid I didn't want to do that <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always been quite a a worried part, like bit quite risk averse in that kind of sense. Um, so yeah, we went on this hack, and I was too frightened to say I'm really nervous. So when we took off in a gallop, I lost my stirrups. I got really tense, and obviously that's the worst thing you can do. Um, and then because I got so tense, I just hit the deck. <laughs> um, and yeah that really affected my confidence and I kind of used the excuse that I was moving away to go to uni um that I'd stopped riding um and then that same friend she lived in a different city from me now but I went down to visit her not long after I'd finished uni and she persuaded me that we would book a little hack and I was going oh my god oh my god oh my god okay I can do this um and the women there that took us out and the girls they were amazing because they wanted to do a group canter and I I this time I was brave enough to be like nope not for me because of what had happened the previous time and one of the girls took me on a separate route just ourselves and we went for she managed to persuade me that we'd go for like a teeny tiny canter um and after that that was me um bought myself a pair of jodhpurs went back to mum and dad's house um a few weeks later was like raking through the garage my poor mum's going oh my god I thought you'd given this up um yeah, raking through the garage, got all my stuff, and then I went back um to Aberdeen, booked myself in at the local riding school. So I was there for about four years. Um I had another horse on part loan before Tonic, um, but he sadly passed away. But it was actually how I met Tonic's owner. Um so it's one of these, you know, like for everything a reason, it all tied into place um and yeah yeah and that was me he was also um he was also a ginge um but he was much more bomb proof <laughs> than tonic he'd been there done that bought the t-shirt you could kind of just point and shoot him at things and hold on which I think was a really good experience for that first kind of step into not quite horse ownership but like that responsibility of having your own um made a difference having him first because he was kind of like I'll show you what to do <laughs> Yeah, before you went on to the one that is a little bit more challenging. Yeah, that's just, he's just, he needs you to hold a tooth. <laughs> oh, bless him. He's such a cutie as well. It's a good thing he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some days where I've been like, mate, why? <laughs> they all have these days, though. I mean, we right. went out with ours last weekend. And we had the most amazing hack. Like my daughter was on my fell pony. He's like most of the time he's lovely. And then occasionally he just has these days where like the whole world's gonna end because he's seen something super scary that he's seen like a million times before. He was absolutely he was perfect. He was amazing until he saw a field with another horse in it. And then he was literally four feet off the ground, bouncing up and down, trying to look over the hedge. He was so excited. He was just you would think he'd never seen another horse in his life. This yeah. horse was clean. Too, I think it was because it had hay. He didn't, you know. Well, I mean, but they, they all have their days. <laughs> they, do, they do. And bless him. He is. He's so. He's come on like leaps and bounds. Like, and he does. He always tries. 
um which I think is really important he's just you know he's just nervous and I think like you know I can't get annoyed at him for being nervous because I am also nervous so you know that's the last thing in the world I could be annoyed at him for and it's probably easier because you do understand and you know where he's coming from in yeah. some ways yeah there's that the empathy bit is really easy but then sometimes I'm like go on if you could just be a little bit braver but then he's probably saying that about me so <laughs> yeah I feel so much better if you could just go over that jump nicely and I knew that you didn't need me for confidence it would be so much easier yeah. and then he would say the same about me so you know <laughs> so you obviously had your fall which you told us about where you then took a little bit of time away from riding after that but tell us about sort of the rest of your confidence journey because you've obviously told everyone that you know you're not the most confident rider or you are now in some aspects and not in others and up and down days but tell us a little bit more yeah it's very it's I find my kind of confidence is very linked to like one horse if that makes sense like I've got friends who can hop on and off different horses all and they're not fast um whereas I'm like oh my god but what if I press the wrong button and put like it's all the what ifs kind of come in your head so like I remember last year I was going with my friends to a beach ride you ride Clydesdales um and my friend that I was with she hadn't ridden in like nearly two years or something like she'd not long had a baby and she was absolutely ready to go and I was like I literally rode yesterday and my legs were shaking when I was getting on I was so nervous and I remember speaking to somebody else and they were like tonic is probably a trickier horse than that one and I was like yeah but I know him <laughs> and I That's think it. that my confidence is quite relationship based um when it comes to horses so like I'm very different with tonic now because I know him so well but it took a really long time to build up that confidence with him and like you're saying you know there's still there's some things that I don't do as much so therefore my confidence jumping like you mentioned that earlier that's a perfect example like my confidence there is nowhere near where it is on the flat for example and I do just know it will just take time I've just I don't know it's one of these things I think I don't start off from a place of what if this is really exciting and it goes really well I start off with all the what ifs and I'm working really hard on that yeah. um because it's that thing isn't it if like 90 percent of your lesson could be amazing and then there's that one thing that happens and that's the one thing that you remember so I'm trying I've been trying really hard over the last like three four years to work on actually writing it down like the good stuff that happens Um, I film a lot of my writing now too so I can look back at it and be like actually look at all this good stuff you did okay there was a refusal or like it wasn't the most elegant jump yeah. or you didn't quite get the dressage movement that you asked for whatever it is but because I film it I can look back and be like there's the other 90% that was really good and it was progress and I just have to keep emphasizing that as much as possible in my brain um but yeah that's it's it's very situational I think my confidence and it's very very linked to the horse that I'm with like the number of times my friends have offered me shots on their horses and I'll just make an excuse and I'm like your horses are absolutely lovely I love watching them go but the idea of sitting on them I'm like oh, it's not tonic <laughs> which is interesting because when my confidence really went I was the opposite my horse that actually doesn't really do anything wrong because he couldn't be bothered <laughs> and if he spooked, in fairness if he spooked he goes into like two steps of canter and then he's done because he'll probably yeah. see a bit of grass that's more exciting it was him <laughs> that freaked me out I could ride anything else I would go and get on like crazy x racers but I'd seen them being ridden first by somebody else so in my mind that was fine whereas my like virtually bomb proof thing I was like no I'm gonna die it's gonna kill me because it walked backwards yeah. and that's what I didn't like it's so irrational and how it works for everyone's really different it's yeah, really it kind of triggers certain reactions but I think because I kind of have a bit of a like tonics like you're saying your horse tonic spook is quite specific like he moves in a very specific way and I feel like I've got such good muscle memory for it now that I know exactly how to move with it and I'm like see if I got on a horse that spooked even in the opposite direction the like, same movement but the opposite direction I think I'd fall <laughs> you just get used to their quirks yeah I think the filming thing's a really good idea. Um, 
And I've started doing it for my daughter because she likes to see how she can improve and she gets really cross with me telling her. So it's far easier and causes less arguments if I film her and then she can watch it back because then what I'm saying to her, actually, if you've done this and you've done this, she can see for herself. But I think it does help when you're looking at like what's gone well and what hasn't gone well because we focus on the rubbish stuff and we only remember yeah. like what went wrong. We don't remember the other 98% of the lesson that went amazing. Exactly. And I think I also I'm not really an audio learner so I'll be so in the moment of like right what's my instructor saying and what am I doing with my feet and what am I doing here and what am I doing that then the next day I'm like what did I learn so having the (laughs) and then you're like why did I just pay 30 pounds for a lesson I can't mind anything that I learned so having the video back also helps me really thingy it in my brain and solidify it that little bit more um so yeah treating myself to a pivo was um a very good investment for my confidence because I can you know I can sit and just set it up and it'll do its thing um and I can like say I can watch it back and I can go right that was good this can be improved upon but I think it stops you kind of catastrophizing it as well like it's really easy to be like that was terrible I'm the worst rider in the world but actually look back and you're like actually no you just need to sit on your butt a bit more or you need to be a bit more proactive with your leg and it's not the end of the world and you're not the worst person in the world who's ever sat on a horse (laughs) but I think you remember it wrong yeah put it into perspective as well because I think sometimes in our heads and I was talking to somebody else about this the other day and they were sort of saying how in their mind they thought their horse had done like this great big huge spook and it was like booking at certain points and then they'd got someone's film and they'd watched it back and they were like actually it's not that bad most of this is in my head it's like tiny yeah I've been there as well it's actually really helped me to be able to watch one tonic spook and also how quickly he'll come back to me yeah and it's really helped to watch it because it feels like the worst thing in the world um but actually when you watch it back you're like okay it's not that bad and it's just trying to force that to become the instinctive thought if that makes sense and not the catastrophizing bit absolutely on a totally separate note though what's the pee though like because I know loads of people are after them I'm after one and I'm trying to justify the purchase so convince me is it good I really like it um like it didn't take me long to kind of play about with the settings um I set it up for all my lessons I filmed online it's been like helped me film online dressage tests without having to nag somebody else to be there so like if I go down to the yard early in the morning that's the kind of the best time for me to do it because there's typically no one else there I can set up the arena but then I'm like oh there's no one here to film me I've got my pivo don't have to worry about it um so yeah I'm a big fan (laughs) like it it, it, it is expensive but I think like the amount I've used it like I always try and think of an expensive purchase, like the amount you use it, like divide it by use or divide it by where. I've well and truly got my got my money's worth from it. I know. Well, I'm currently horse shopping for another one. Um, <laughs> so I'm a little think- more expensive than a pivo. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking. Then the idea is that I'm going to be riding more because I won't be sharing ponies and horses with various children. So then if I'm riding more, I want one to be able to film me because I want to be able to, we're going to be doing some more online stuff and I don't trust any of the kids to film me and I'm not sure Hubby's going to stand there and film me. Yeah, maybe in the summer, but not in the winter. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And even in the summer, I think I might have to entice him with like a beer and a chair. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm definitely going to look into one of those. Okay, so what is your sort of top tip or top couple of tips, apart from the video side of it, for anybody who's really struggling with their confidence at the moment? So my, the, one of the best things I've ever been told um, is when I went back to riding as an adult, and I remember this, um, we were doing our first no sit up session, and I was like, oh God. Um, and I was fine, you know, I was doing my thing. And then I remember my instructor being like, you know, how are you finding it? And I was like, I feel like I'm going to like kind of boing off the side. And he was like, yeah, because I don't think you've taken a breath in like however long we've been doing it. So like you're super tense. And I was like, oh, yeah, actually, I do feel quite out of breath because I hadn't been breathing. Um, and he said to me, he was like, talk to yourself. He's like, some people sing, some people do a recipe. I tried the recipes thing, but I get too caught up in where I'm at. 
and then I can't concentrate on the writing bit because I'm too busy thinking about what stage I'm at in like spaghetti um but I just go one two three four over and over again and it just forces me to breathe normally and when I'm breathing normally my body's more relaxed and also tonic is is quite like a noise sensitive horse so if even if I'm just saying one two three four over and over again if he can hear me speaking I actually think it like settles him like when we're out hacking by ourselves we, I just chat to him the whole way around um the number of times I've bumped into people and I'm like don't mind me just uh talking to my horse about the state of the world <laughs> um but that really helps um and also have somebody on the ground if you can I don't know what it is about having somebody on the ground even if they don't know anything about horses it's always made me feel so much better um like even if they're just sitting on their phones and they're not doing anything I don't know what it is about that security blanket of somebody being there but it really helps me and I've spoken to quite a lot of people who have said the same thing um and it's quite good there's a few of us on the yard that have their nervous moments or their nervous days and we're just like yeah just sitting here with you that's fine like I'm finished doing what I'm doing so I'll just sit in the school with you and we always just kind of take it in turns and you know it's ups and downs isn't it like some days you'll need it some days you won't um but it's a really cool like supportive little crew that we have and even the people that aren't nervous at all are like yeah that's fine I'll uh I will happily sit and just you know sit on my phone or whatever while you do your um do your thing in the school if you're feeling a little bit nervous I just think we need more of that in the horsey world like regardless of your own experience with nerves or with confidence or whatever it is everyone's come at you know everyone's life experience horsey or not whatever it is all factors into the horsey stuff and it's all different and that's all okay and it doesn't need to make sense to you but if it's like that's your friend and that's them saying it's going to help them just do it and we're all in it because we've all got the same passion at the end of the day we're all there because we're crazy enough to, you know, want to spend our life savings on horses and <laughs> kill ourselves for this weekend, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. and then that, they're really, really good tips. And I used to have an instructor that used to make me sing nursery rhymes. And, yeah, nobody else on the yard wanted to hear me going around singing nursery rhymes. But if she saw I wasn't breathing, she would shout at me until I did it. <laughs> but yeah. it does help. It does help. Yeah, I, know I think that's the, one, the one, two, three, four thing for me. I think it's because I think I would get really so self conscious about singing that I would get anxious about it, would just be like a weird spiral of things to be anxious about. Whereas one, two, three, four under your breath doesn't really like thingy any attention. Yeah, yeah. I now just randomly talk about stuff because my horse is the same as yours. He really likes to hear someone's voice just so he knows there's somebody there, even though he's got someone yeah. on his back. And it's just that, yeah, I'll randomly talk about anything. People now are just so used to me sort of going through the <laughs> village and having random conversations. No one even looks anymore. Yeah, they're just like, okay, that's her talking to her horse. <laughs> yeah, it's totally normal now. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad it's not just me. No, absolutely not. So what is coming up next for you and Tonic? What have you got planned in over the next few months? Uh... I was trying to think now we will have later on kind of in the springtime I'm not sure exactly when um our riding club dress actually will start back up again so I'm going to keep doing that um and hopefully tonic will be less reactive to the car <laughs> the first one we did we hadn't done a real life dress dressage test in like two years last year and uh, the first one we did he was trotting down the center line and it was beautiful and he got over x and he went what the hell is that and why is it in the school and just like planted to a stop i managed to get him to walk past it but he was like mum why is that in the school <laughs> um again the, the judge was very kind in her comments bless her um but yeah so i'm hoping to do some more of that uh, and keep up his confidence um, and we're also looking at maybe doing some trailer training in the Easter holidays so we can look at getting out and about and just having that option um, to be able to go off the yards because, you know, I see things and I'm like, oh, that would be really good. That would be really good. But I'm almost like I used to be like, oh, that would be good, but I'll never be able to do that. Whereas now I'm like, 
we need to do the you know the loading training which we've started to do we need to take him for a wee 10 minute spin in the trailer see how he gets on um and then take him to like a nearby local venue even just for like a lesson just yeah. to see how he gets on and then building it up so that I do I will eventually have all those options and I'll be able to go as long as I can bribe somebody to take me um but I will be able to go like two of these cool things that I see out and about because I think for a long time I put myself in a box of like that'll never be for me and now I'm like why not yeah exactly. a massive yeah, well, mindset change yeah. and it's those small steps that are gonna get you there like you said not only for Tonic's confidence but also for your confidence actually you're gonna be able to get him on the lorry and he's not gonna be a nightmare like yeah. sometimes just lorry if they start kicking off and just thinking no I'm not gonna do it I'd rather just stay here you know there's people watching and that's yeah. Awful. depending on where you are it is not a nice situation to be in so I think doing little things like that where you're building it up and then he's confident getting on the lorry you're confident in getting him on even when he's being a monkey yeah. it makes all the difference I am super lucky like you saying about people watching like we our yard owners are kind of incredibly selective as to who they have as liveries and like everyone it's they could be they could have gone out and done a one day event the day before and you've trotted over a cross pole and they're like genuinely cheating you on like you've just gone over the finish line at badminton like it's honestly it's like the most supportive place so like that's the thing that I think helps as well you know you've got all these people genuinely really cheering you on um and you know if that was the case where he's been a monkey anyone watching would just be like do you need me to help or do you need me to leave <laughs> <laughs> I know though like the I was so worried before I went there um because I'd never be I'd never had a pony when I was a kid I'd never been in a livery yard and you just hear all these stories and I was like how is yeah. this gonna go and then I met them all and I was like oh it's fine <laughs> but, it, but you, you think it, like livery place, yards have a reputation they do some places just are not as friendly as that or are just you go on yards where it's really competitive and if you're not that sort of rider you don't feel like you fit in so it's really important I think to find the right yard that works for you and yeah. for your horse too. you know horses all want different things that make them feel relaxed and exactly yeah exactly you know we've got a really good mix of people that are you know doing a bit of lessons doing a bit of whatever they're hacking they're just doing handwork or they're going out event like it's such a mix um which I think is really good because you've always got someone you can hang out with oh it sounds so nice we all want to be on your yard now. honestly I love it I like I should be on commission <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I am never leaving here <laughs> I'm stuck with you you can never get rid of me <laughs> Even if you get fed up of me dancing to to reels. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been so lovely and so nice to share with everybody a little bit more about you and your journey and your account. Um, and like I said, everybody, please, please go and follow Ginger and Tonic Equestrian. Go watch the reels. Go see the reels that are coming up. <laughs> see which ones you relate to. <laughs> and if you have suggestions send them my way <laughs> yes absolutely send the content either and i will tag ginger and tonic in this video anyway so you will be able to find them super easy and go and check them out but thank you so much laura for joining us it's been really good Thanks. and if anybody wants if anybody wants to say if anybody wants to watch the rest of the videos then if you just scroll you will find all of the other episodes Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you guys for joining us. And we'll catch you soon.